Chapter 2, Section 4, Congress, Procedures and Processes, Part 1. Special Procedures in the House. The procedures in the House of Representatives reflect its highly partisan yet also democratic nature. Decisions made by the House typically require only a simple majority vote, and many special procedures, even those designed to give a voice to minority interests, reinforce the notion of majority rule. Rules Committee After a bill is reported by a standing committee, it is usually then submitted to the Rules Committee, which proposes a set of rules for debating that particular bill. Important decisions made by the Rules Committee include whether amendments may be offered, and if so, how many are allowed, and which sections of the bill may be amended. This committee also decides whether floor debate is permitted to take place, and if so, how much debate time will be allocated to each representative. The constraints put in place by the Rules Committee can significantly affect the likelihood that a bill will pass the House, and the majority party exerts a strong influence over the rulemaking process. Unlike other House committees, where the ratio of majority to minority members is more balanced, the membership of the Rules Committee tilts heavily in favor of the majority party. While the recommendations of the Rules Committee must be voted on by the full House, the majority party usually has voting power to ensure that the proposals made by the Rules Committee are adopted easily. Committee of the Whole The Committee of the Whole is a committee made up of the entire House of Representatives. Typically, the House resolves itself into a committee of the whole in order to consider a bill, primarily because the parliamentary procedures for committees are less complex than those of the full House, but also because the quorum required is lower, 100 versus 218. The committee of the whole is authorized to debate and amend proposed legislation using the rules previously adopted by the House for that bill. Once the debate and amendment process is concluded, the Committee of the Whole dissolves, and the bill is reported back to the full House for a vinyl up-or-down vote. Discharge Petitions The majority party exerts a considerable amount of control over the legislative process in the House. But by filing a discharge petition, it is possible for individual members to circumvent the majority when a bill is stalled in committee. If successful, this will take the bill from the jurisdiction of the standing committee and bring it to the floor for a vote. Because they require the support of an absolute majority of representatives, discharge petitions rarely succeed, as it is unlikely that enough members of the majority party will agree to support a discharge petition that conflicts with the decisions of their own party's leadership. However, the threat of a discharge petition is sometimes enough to prompt action on a bill that is stuck in committee. Special Procedures in the Senate The procedures used in the Senate signal its commitment to bipartisanship and minority party rights by requiring supermajority approval for most legislative business. Senate procedures also reflect its smaller size relative to the House and its resulting ability to proceed less formally. Cloture the standing rules in the Senate permit unlimited debate and amendments, and there is no requirement that speeches or amendments be relevant to the subject matter of the original bill. A motion for cloture is the only way to end debate and call for a final up or down vote, and it requires the approval of three-fifths of the full Senate. Because the majority party rarely holds that many seats, the minority party can often postpone the final vote on a bill through a process known as filibustering. During a filibuster, senators use their unlimited speaking time to extend debate indefinitely for a bill they do not support. The only way to end the filibuster is through a successful cloture motion. While actual filibusters are rare today, they are commonly threatened. As a result, controversial legislation effectively requires approval by a three-fifths supermajority. Unanimous Consent in order to expedite the legislative process, the majority of Senate business is conducted through a parliamentary procedure known as unanimous consent. Under this procedure, the Senate is presumed to act with the mutual consent of all senators unless an objection is raised, allowing the Senate to approve bills and other measures without extended debate or a time-consuming roll call vote. The Senate standing rules require unanimous consent for any motion to submit a bill for floor consideration, allowing just one senator to block consideration of a bill by placing an anonymous hold on the legislation.
Usually, a hold is resolved through bipartisan negotiations between party leaders, but if the negotiations fail, the hold can become a filibuster, which can only be ended by a successful cloture motion. Importantly, any method of resolving a hold requires the support of more than just a simple majority. Ratification and Confirmation Rules Article 2 authorizes the President of the United States to make treaties and to nominate judges and other public officials with the advice and consent of the Senate. The House plays no role in either process. For treaty ratification, a supermajority of two-thirds approval of the Senate is required. For confirmation of judicial and executive branch nominees, only simple majority approval is required. The Senate utilizes the pre-existing committee system for both treaty ratifications and appointment confirmations. As with legislation, these matters sometimes stall in committee. In 2016, for example, the Republican-controlled Senate Judiciary Committee simply refused to consider Democratic President Barack Obama's Supreme Court nominee Merrick Garland, allowing the nomination to expire at the end of President Obama's second term, and paving the way for the confirmation of newly elected Republican President Donald Trump's nominee, Neil Gorsuch. Like legislation, treaty ratification and appointment confirmations are subject to unlimited floor debate in the full Senate, and require a successful cloture motion to end debate and proceed to a vote. Due to recent rule changes, however, judicial and executive branch nominations require only a simple majority to invoke cloture, rather than the three-fifths majority required for legislation.